Hi, uh, and welcome back to our learning of uh, Mishnah. We're learning uh, Shabbat now. We're starting chapter two, which begins with the discussion of what um, is appropriate to use for lighting the, the Shabbos lamp or the, uh, the Shabbos candles nowadays. Um, and what is underlying this discussion uh, would be the, the reasons why um, we have Shabbos lamp and Shabbos candles in the first place. So there's a couple of different reasons given by the rabbis. We have Kavoda Shabbat, Oneg Shabbat, and uh, Shalom Bayit, the, uh, the honor due to Shabbat, the uh, enjoyment of Shabbat, and peace in the home. So we want to be able to have uh, a well-lit room to give proper honor to the Shabbos meal on, of the evening, um, and we want to be able to enjoy Shabbat, we want to be able to read and to, and to see each other, um, and to be able to do different activities together to, to um, just be in a, in, a, in a positive, nice setting for the meal. Um, and also we want to not have to worry about stumbling over things, people getting frustrated with each other, all those things that could emerge if you're stuck in the dark for all of Shabbat. Um, so those are all the, the values that are um, at play. And there's kind of, uh, there's very practical considerations as to what would be the proper materials for the wicks and for the oil um, in order to, to uh, ensure that those values are kept uh, when we, we have our Shabbos lamp or candles. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, Mishnah 1. What would we light the Sabbath lamp with, and what would we not light it with? So we may light neither with cedar bass, nor with uncarded flax, nor with floss, oil, floss silk, nor with willow bass, nor with desert fiber, nor with sea moss. Okay, so these are all things that we might not be familiar with. These are things that could be the uh, could be used as a wick um, for an oil lamp. Uh, what would be the concern? The concern is: is it something that's gonna the oil is gonna travel well through that will stay a nice, steady, bright light? It's a very practical concern. We want to make sure that no one's gonna have to. Uh, be tempted or, or mistakenly violate Shabbat because they want to tilt the lamp for more oil to go in because this wick is not really a good conductor, a good uh, means of getting the oil to flow. Um, or maybe it'll flicker. Maybe it won't be a very, uh, provide for a very strong, steady flame. There's very practical concerns. Okay, now some of the forbidden oils. We just talked about some of the forbidden uh, wicks. So, so below the zefet, below the sha'ava, below the shemen kik. Velo v'shem and serifa, velo v'aliyah, velo v'chelev. Okay, so a couple different things here and a couple different concerns. Nor may we light with pitch, nor with wax, nor with cottonseed oil, nor with oil that must be burnt, nor with fat from a sheep's tail, nor with tallow. Okay, so uh, most of these probably are also about the practical concerns of is it a good um, conductor? Is it gonna is it gonna work well? Does it uh, um, you know travel through the wick well? Uh, does it keep a nice flame? Um, a couple of these are particularly interesting. So one that is, is below Vashem and Sarefa, nor with oil that must be burnt. What is that referring to? That's referring to oil that was set aside as truma. It's a, um, one of the biblical offerings that are due to the Kohanim. Um, and became tame, become ritually unpure. So when that happens to truma, you have to uh, burn it. So you can't use this oil that needs to be burnt. And we're going to see in the next Mishnah why exactly that is, because it's not entirely clear why it should be forbidden for the Kohanim to burn it and benefit from that light. Um, so we'll have to see specifically why this one is forbidden in the next one. And the other one I think that's interesting is Velo V'chelev. Is the, um, that is the, the biblically prohibited fat uh, of an animal that's pro prohibited for consumption. But why, why would it be um, an issue for using as a lamp, um, as a fuel source. Um, so we'll see. Nachum Hamadi Omer, Madlikin Bechelev Mevushal. Nachum the Mead says, you, we may light with boiled tallow. So it's maybe about it, its ability also to be a good, a good source, um, that when it's um, cooked, maybe it becomes a, like into a different substance, uh, uh, the, the texture is different, it's able to be, uh, it's more conducive to what we need um, as this uh, source. And but the sages say they disagree with Nachum, and they say whether boiled or not boiled, whether it's cooked or not, uh, we may not light with it. So um, either they have maybe they have some other reason, or they're just worried about it's still not a very good um, thing to use for your Shabbos lamp um, practically. 
Okay, Mishnah 2. Ein madlikin b'shemen sreifa b'yom tov. Okay, this answers our question of the last one. We may not light with oil that must be burnt on yom tov. Okay, so we said the oil that must be burnt, what does that mean? That means the oil from, from truma, from, so oil that was set aside to give as an offering to the kohanim. Um, and then it became tame, it became ritually impure. We have uh, an obligation to burn it. It can't be used for its intended purpose at that point. Um, so specifically, when you have a, uh, a Yom Tov that goes into Shabbat, uh, there's a specific prohibition against burning this, this oil that needs to be burned, that's required to be burned, up against burning it on Yom Tov. So we're specifically talking about a case when Yom Tov is going into Shabbat. You want to light your lamp for Shabbat, and it happens to be on Yom Tov when you have a prohibition against burning this oil that you need to burn. Okay, so that's a very specific kind of case that we're dealing with there. Rabbi Ishmael Omer, Ein madlikin be'itaran mipnei kavod ha-shabbat. Rabbi Ishmael says, we may not light with tar because of honor due to the Sabbath. So what is this about, honor due to the Sabbath? If you burn tar, it'll create a smell, and then maybe you won't want to have your Shabbos meal there. So you'll say, let me get out of this room, it smells terrible. Um, and then you just, it, it was not, it didn't fulfill its intended purpose of creating honor for the Sabbath by having a well-lit, nice, enjoyable meal, you left the room because you didn't want to deal with this tar smell. It totally didn't serve its purpose, so don't use this from the first place. But the um, sages, they permit lighting with all oils, namely with sesame oil, with nut oil, with radish oil, with fish oil, with colocynth oil, with tar, or with naphtha. Okay, so the sages um, allow, um, are not worried about maybe uh, um, if someone does or doesn't like the smell, um, just concerned with are you going to be able to use it, is it a, prop, is it a, a usable um, fuel source that will burn well and keep the room well lit. Rabbi Tarfon Omer, Rabbi Tarfon says, we may light only with olive oil. So a lot of the sages are going to disagree um, with Rabbi Tarfon for other practical concerns. Um, what if people don't have access to this? So maybe olive oil, maybe everyone can agree or most people can agree that olive oil is the ideal um, substance to use for your Shabbos lamp. Um, but it can't be the only option because people in maybe different locales, especially um, in the ancient world, um, wouldn't necessarily um, always have access to one type of oil. They might have to use other things. So the, what's really important um, is that it's something that we will not, um, both the wick and the oil source will, uh, will not um, create a light that, that flickers or that goes out of that, that makes you want to tilt the lamp to get the oil to flow better, which would be a violation of Shabbat. Um, or makes you want to remove some of the oil, maybe because it smells so good that you want someone to put it somewhere else and then you're doing uh, chibui or that you're doing uh, extinguishing on Shabbat. So you want to avoid violations of Shabbat. You want it to be able to serve the functions of being um, for kavod Shabbat and oneg Shabbat that honor the Sabbath and to uh, um, delight and to enjoy the Sabbath and shalom bayit and peace in the home. So it should be uh, a good fuel source, um, not a distracting smell. It should not flicker, it should burn well, not need uh, you to tilt it in order to get the oil to flow through the wick. Um, all of those things, that's what's important. So a lot of practical concerns here, but really what it's about is uh, trying to make Shabbat um, meaningful and enjoyable and trying to respect the sanctity of Shabbat um, and have a, a good atmosphere in the home. Okay, we'll continue with uh, Mishnah 3 of chapter 2 next week. Okay. Hopes everyone is having uh, enjoyable holidays and continues to do so and, and an easy fast coming up. Okay, bye.